Hello, human geographers. We are back at it again this evening. Tonight, we are going to talk about gender dynamics related to agriculture. Changing agricultural practices have altered not only the rural environment and economy, but also relations between men and women. Women produce more than 50% of the world's food and represent nearly half of its agricultural labor force. And women have historically been very influential in agricultural production. Back to early hunter-gatherer groups, women had daily contact with useful wild plants, and they probably played a larger role in early plant domestication. Women often harvested the crops and prepared the food, while men continued to hunt, provide the meat. Women have traditionally been, and often still are, in charge of selecting, cooking, and serving food to their families. But large numbers of women continue to enter the workforce, so fewer women cook on a regular basis and families eat out more often, which can provide women with greater flexibility. Even still, today, women make up a little more than 40% of the world's agricultural labor, labor force. In regions where subsistence farming remains common, the figure can be over 70%. But as more farms transition from subsistence to commercial agriculture, there can be a gender bias in education, access to agricultural training, or capital. For example, in Malawi, a country in sub-Saharan Africa, the men received training related to commercial production of sweet potatoes, while women received training related to subsistence farming and how to use the sweet potato crops in their roles as caregivers in the household. Let's start by looking at the world based on the level of development. In developing countries, women spend more time in agricultural production than women in developed countries do. Less than one third of farmers in the developed world are women. That's because women's roles vary between subsistence agriculture and commercial agriculture. So let's begin with our developing world, and we'll come back to the more developed world shortly. Much of the subsistence farming labor is performed by women, often representing more than 50% of the labor force. In peripheral regions like Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, with large rural populations, 60% of all employed females work on small, family-run farms, often receiving little to no pay for their work. That's because the woman may be caring for livestock, sowing seeds, or pulling weeds, activities that have an impact on the economic output, but are often not counted as part of the formal economy. In fact, 90% of weeding in Sub-Saharan Africa is done by women. If the weeds aren't pulled, then the crops do not receive the nutrients necessary to produce the maximum yield. So clearly, weeding is part of the economic output. But often, women aren't even considered, quote, economically active, as you see in this graphic, let alone receiving pay for that work. And that work is often done by hand without machinery or labor-saving technology. In fact, there is often a formal division of labor in many subsistence societies that is not present in commercial activities. Women may not have access to capital to purchase machinery, but also may not be able to purchase high-yield seeds, fertilizers, or pesticides. And men are often in politically, socially, and economically dominant positions, making decisions and receiving training that women do not receive. And as more machinery is introduced and operated by men, women are less involved with field work, which may lead to greater rural to urban migration for women. But agricultural work is often seen as an extension of household responsibilities for women. 
Female farmers provide much of the food that their families need for survival. On the other hand, in commercial regions, women may represent a significantly smaller percentage of the agricultural workforce. In 2017, in the United States, women were reported as 36% of the 3.4 million farmers in the country. In Europe, 30% of farms across the European Union are managed by women farmers. But women in large-scale agribusinesses have taken on newer roles, such as management, sales, distribution, and research. And in 2017, female farmers, ranchers, and agricultural managers exceeded the earnings of their male counterparts in the United States. But, as with their male counterparts, many female farmers in core countries are getting older. In the European Union, almost 40% of the women in agriculture are over 65 years old. And the average age of women farmers in the United States is 57 years old. Beyond just work and pay, one of the major issues for women in agriculture is a lack of land rights. In the Republic of Congo, women produce approximately 75% of the food in rural areas but have no ownership rights simply because they're female. In Cameroon, women are 75% of the agricultural workforce, but own just 10% of the land. Women in subsistence societies often lack full ownership of land, but also crops and livestock. In other areas, legal rights may exist on paper, but are disregarded in practice. A related obstacle is the lack of capital, because in many countries, laws require a woman to obtain her husband's signature before she can receive a loan. So she's unable to purchase land, fertilizer, seeds, or mechanized farm equipment. Similar issues are present in core countries. Farms owned by women in the EU tend to be smaller than those owned by men. But there's an interesting situation that comes from Italy. Agritourism is an emerging industry where tourists stay and sometimes work on farms and enjoy meals made from local products. And in Italy, one third of farms are now run by women and almost 40% of agritourism companies are run by women. But the number of women farmers is increasing in both subsistence and commercial farming economies. So how can we further empower female farmers and what will happen as we do? By providing equitable education, technical support, access to capital, and government policies, it will promote greater gender equality and empower female farmers. Already, women spend less time preparing food than did women in previous generations. But when men become more involved in food preparation, particularly when both partners are working, it also promotes greater gender equality. Microfinancing, or microloans, are loans in very small amounts, but enable small farmers, especially female farmers, to invest in new equipment, and expand their business. So what might happen with greater gender equality in the primary sector? A report issued by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations in 2017 said that if women in rural areas had the same access as men to agricultural resources like land, technology, markets, and financial services, agricultural productivity would increase by 20 to 30 percent. That's enough to reduce the number of hungry people by 100 to 150 million. And since women are more likely to be malnourished, greater gender equality would lead to healthier and longer lives, especially among new mothers and their children in the developing world. That's all for tonight. Thank you all for your attention, and I'll see you back in class.